<laughs> when Roblox, when Ro I said Roblox, when Rollback got announced, a lot of people asked, who's the easiest character to pick up? Who, like, who do I play? So I've been asked a lot about characters that are easy to pick up. So I thought, I'll make something today. I am going to make a, kind of a list on, or like, who's the easiest characters? Like, who's the hardest? And I'll explain why. So if you're completely unfamiliar, or if you're only familiar with Excerpt from Strive, then, you know, this should help you. So let's go over here. Hello. So we have a list here. This list is going to be basically, it's not entirely just about like uh, how strong they are or like just directly in how, how direct they can be. Not just in terms of execution or like, you know, like how like their game plan is, but also in just like how are their matchups going to be like you know what i mean like it it varies so like i'll give you an example so raven i mean raven is one of the easiest examples raven is extremely straightforward in almost every way like his kit is just extremely strong uh he has a mechanic but it's almost basically overshadowed by how good his normals are um his matchups are all like very stable because he has very very good buttons in fact uh we're gonna explain a little bit with raven as we go on so here's the thing about raven Raven has a mechanic. Uh, it's basically excitement gauge. It's based on if he command grabs you, uh, does scratch, as you can see, it also gauges, uh, it actually shows you how much he gets. How he works is he has a stance. It's basically hyper armor. If he blocks something, or I guess if he uses his stance and you hit into him, you can see it, depending on the hit absorbed and the attack level, it basically gives him this. These will buff his moves, right? This is relevant for some things. Like for example, if he command grabs you, he has a command grab, he has an aerial command grab and a, uh, a ground command grab. These give him combos if he has levels, as you can see here, which actually is pretty important. Uh, but the thing is, his normals are so good, his mechanic basically does not matter. It comes up, but it, it's it's not as important as you would think. What uh, Raven's actually known for is having, like I said, God neutral and God buttons. He's not like a character that specifically zones you like Axel. It's more like he has buttons that are really good at interacting with you. For example, here is the infamous one, 5H. So 5H is considered his one of his best buttons. It's an anti-air, it counterpokes. Can you basically this move will essentially make you very upset. Just prepare yourself for that. It does almost everything. It's it's so good, it's so fast, gives him a combo, can frame trap very fast. A lot of shit that's just like very, very strong. Another thing about him also is his consistent thing is just that he's got a lot of range for how fast he is. So in Exert, there's not really characters that get a lot of damage off of fire slashes, right? That's very uncommon. Usually characters that get damage off fire slashes are either with meter or they are very, very specific, like Elfo. <laughs> but Raven kind of breaks this mold because he has one of the better hit confirms, which is from 2H, which is this move. Um, this is the profile. It goes about, I think, one third the screen. Um, in fact, you can't even see it because of how big it is here. Let's see if I get it. <laughs> it's very long. He can hit confirm pretty well from far slash into 2H. Uh, not only this, this also gives him a combo. So um, this is like, again, one of his stronger buttons. You may think like, basically he's just like long stretchy man. And that's basically what he is. It's, he's kind of like Dalsum in, in the pure sense of like how long his limbs are. But otherwise he basically zones you with just like the, it, he doesn't really zone you as much as he's just like, my buttons are better than yours. Um, 2S is like incredible. Again, almost everything leads to like a decent route. Again, we haven't even talked about his air moves. Uh, and Exert, some characters have special abilities in like either Again, this is very weird if you've not played older Guilty Gears, but older characters had weird specific strengths. So I'll give you an example. Raven has a strength, and similar to Soul, in that he's very burst safe. A lot of his routes can be burst safe or can be made to be burst safe, and he also has some of the best air normals in the game. In fact, I think most people argued that, which was it? Jump P was one of the best air to airs in the game. Jump P, Jump S, uh, he also has a dive kick. It's not that great, honestly, but he has it. Jump H, which is very, very good, and Jump D, which is also very good. In fact, uh, I've mentioned before, one of the like the times I remember getting angriest at fighting games. There's two times. Number one was when I played against SQ's Fairy in Grand Blue. I remember getting so pissed at Fairy. One time before that, I got so angry 
was I played against Fame's Raven in like 2016. And this is when Raven was like like super broken. Like he was super good. And I remember getting so pissed at this move. Cause like you could not answer it. You literally could not answer it. I'm not joking. Like I'm it's not an exaggeration. You could straight up not answer this move. I was like, oh my god, I could not believe it. It got me so angry. So what does Raven do with all this? So Raven's thing is he has a glide. He actually does not have a regular air dash, he has a glide. The thing about his glide is that it enables him to actually start offense from basically anything. Like if he gets a knockdown, he can either glide or he can set ball, which is essentially one of his ways of setting Oki. So he, this is basically what he does. He knocks you down and he throws orb like this, right? This is orb. You have to block it depending on how many hits he has of excitement. Or as you can see here, depending on his levels, it actually varies depending on, uh, it varies depending on what level he's at. For frame down. Usually it doesn't matter though. Like it's it's rarely relevant. So his thing is he knocks you down. He out basically he outranges you. He out, he out neutrals you. He knocks you down and then he set plays you. So I, I got a good match here School, not that we can, we can put on here. Books or anything like that. And he saw this game in the arcade. So Zadi was like, considered like the best addict. Raven in Exert. Uh, Machbo is considered here like the best Kai for sure, or at least Zadie's like one of them. I mean, he's one of the best players for sure. Uh, so here's something very important to highlight as well. Raven does not only have a unique air dash, he has a unique dash. So what's important about this is when he dashes, there's a small startup. And then he he goes invul. So uh, this character can invul through projectiles. He can run at you through basically anything. But uh, when he goes, when he dashes long enough, you can see he goes invisible, and then he reappears after a short break. And the th entire time he is invul. Another thing about Raven is he has uh, needles. So these are not really that great of projectiles. Like they're okay, really. Like they're just like whatever. But the advantage of them is that if you get hit, you get slowed down. So if you get slowed down, that means like, obviously it makes it a lot easier for him to move around you, but also challenge you. Until he gets but the, that the, the status is not that long, but you'll notice it when it's on you. Here's the only real thing that's super difficult with this character. Depending on how you input it, I don't remember how you do it. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's like if you, if you glide and then immediately press a button, you can fast fall with Raven. This is actually how he does his low mix up. So he can either like glide and just go straight forward and like hold it, or he can glide, do a fast button, and then uh, he'll fall to the ground faster and go low. This is basically his only like really complicated thing. Um, his weakness besides that is really just that he dies very fast. He has very high guts though. He has, I believe, five guts. So here's here's one thing that gets a lot of people, and this is one reason why there are a lot of knowledge checks like this, where it's about if they have meter, they can basically just like check at you with like a greedy situation. Or like Sun Edge YRC is like another great example of this. They can throw orb YRC, and then if you jump on response, they can also command grab you. They can actually unblockable you from this if this if it comes up. But yeah, in this game, Kai actually can like 50-50. It's kind of funny. If you've played, if you've only played Exert, it's or Strive, it's it's gonna be funny going going from that to this. So this is Kai's thing as well. We might as well touch on Kai. Kai, uh, actually while we while we're here, we're also gonna put Kai on this list because he's also pretty easy. Kai's only hard thing is like he has some specific matchups that can be or, or like pretty bad. Kai's thing is that he doesn't have much high execution. His main thing is in that his BNB he has to do dash vapor thrust, which can be hard. It's 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 like really the hardest thing he has, but or it's one of the hardest things he has. Kai is basically very similar to how he is in Egg or in Strive, but he basically has Oki. Is how you how I would describe it. So he's got grinders. So these are basically just like f ways of frame trapping or like ending his pressure. If he does a fireball into them, it buffs the fireball. So you can see charge stunage into it, makes it very very plus. They have to hold it. It lasts a long time. When he does his jump, basically he gets a high low from this. You cannot fuzzy this. You you well you can, but it's very very hard. It's like one of the hardest things to fuzzy, and it's it's probably one of the easiest things to execute. So air dash high, you can't you get strong. Two D, and get super. Uh, so sacred edge in this game is a lot better. Okay, so that is very safe if you do uh, TK. So it's a close slash grinder, setup, low, get strong, 
Oh, dad. Uh, starts his pressure. He does do a lot of damage off like a close slash starter, but he usually does not do that high damage. It's more about the situation he puts you in with with uh, stun edge, uh, charge stun edge into uh, into this. So again, high low, and then if he has meter, he can really cast out and do a lot of damage. But yeah, like basically, Kai is pretty similar except he has like a grinder mechanic that's built around him going for pressure like this, right? So basically, these two are like one of the more direct characters. A lot of their matchups are pretty straightforward. They're pretty easy. Minor execution things that like, you know, they're not a case of like characters that are very difficult in the sense of like, you know, you have to spend a lot of time training with them, wanting them just to execute. I'm going to give you an example of a character that would be more along those lines. So in fact, I'm going to line them up in an order, right? Chip's weird in this game. Maybe Jam. I think Jam is like a kid. So let me give you some examples of how this works. Axel, for example, his kit is very straightforward, right? He is one of the simplest kits like tied with Raven and Kai, but the problem with them is that his matchups are fucking terrible. There are some matchups that are like extremely bad and it's extremely like, you have to learn very specific ways to play them, right? Um, but like, there's not a ton of complicated stuff to Axel. It's like really bomber loops are the hardest thing Axel has. But like, again, his, his kit, like how you have to play Axel is very, very difficult. You have to be very good at moving forward, but you can't be too committal a lot of the time, right? People make fun of Axel players for playing aggressive in this game. Like if you, if you're the type of Axel like that would do like IDN, I mean, where's the bears quote? We got to get this shit, I guess. It's so easy to die and like playing like this. This is like a legendary bears quote. <laughs> My extremely effective zoning style is too good. I'm an ID and see what happens. <laughs> there are characters that are very directly like a lot of execution or like a lot of stuff to study. But once you like learn how to play them, like a lot of their matchups or strategies become a lot more direct. Jam has a lot of stuff to keep in mind and like like matchup wise, for example, Jam, you have to understand like, do I go for Geki in this matchup? Do I go for Ryujin? Uh, like, prioritizing cards, combos, uh, how you challenge. It can be kind of hard, even though her ex like her kit and like her buns are very solid and very, like she's very good as like a very direct linear character, but she's still a lot of stuff to learn in terms of matchups, right? Or sorry, like she's learned to like the baseline of matchups and like how to play them. But uh, like from there on out, like she's, she's a very effective character. I would say similarly like maybe Dizzy is also in this category of like, there's a lot of character, there's a lot of stuff to learn for her kit, right? You don't have to learn all of it. You don't have to learn all her set play stuff. But like the barrier to entry with Dizzy can be complicated because there's a lot of stuff to learn with her to be super effective, right? And of course, this is assuming that you are like going to try to learn everything. Like Leo can be very easy to pick up, but like his matchup strategy or his matchup spread can be bad enough or like require very specific play styles to where if you're not like this is not like strive where if you like if you play a bad matchup or like against a character that forces you to play a specific way you cannot bulldoze them and just win you can't do that if you play a character that loses a matchup and you do not play the way that it like they make you like they they need you to play like if you don't instant block this or if you don't blitz that then you basically just die. Like you might as well not even play the game. It's it's like one. It's really brutal. For example, against Soul, almost all of Leo's back turn shit is invalidated by IB into TP. So if you don't have any strategy around that, then like you, I mean, you're done. So like usually I would say characters that are like have a very direct kit, but like very hard matchups or require very specific strategies or like a certain skill set, I would put into this category, right? Whereas characters, I would say, that have a more barrier to entry, but more of an easier, like, middle ground to be a little more complicated. So Milia, she requires, like, to play her well, you have to get good knockdowns, which means you have to either use pin or you have to know her combos. If you play anyone that knows how to play around Milia's pin, you cannot basically do number one. If you only are... If you like play against someone that knows how to play against pin, you have to know the routes or you're basically going to be super inconsistent or you're going to need meter to knock people down. In Milia's case, there's a huge barrier to entry to even execute her. Like she has very character specific routes. She does a lot of damage. Like she's a very good character, but she's very, very hard. In fact, I would almost say like, she's probably a contender for the hardest character right now. Like if you were like to learn everything, Milia probably would be the most difficult character in this version of the game, honestly. Slayer is like weird. Slayer is like a middle ground because like you have to learn BDC shit to be effective with him. I would say he's hard. I would say he's hard. Even though like Slayer is like one of the more character capable characters of robbing you. 
like to develop very strongly and like as like like know how to if you know how to play against slayer or slayer plays like a specific matchup it can be fucking miserable really any character that has very active moves uh, is like always a problem for Slayer, right? You know what? Why don't we just? How about I list everyone? We're gonna. How about we list everyone when you go down the list? How about that? Let's talk about each character. We'll go down the list here. Faust uh, in this game is a lot different than Faust in other games. Was it Evo Japan 2019 that he won? Faust has very good return. Uh, how neutral works in this game is a little different. So his items are a lot better in this game. They're almost all much, much better. Uh, we've already talked about jackpot items before, but we'll talk about them again. So how Faust works is depending on uh, when he throws an item, the, he basically has a chance. What is it, 10% chance? So there's a 20% chance in each item he throws if it'll be a jackpot item. Jackpot items are literally just better versions of the item. They almost always favor him. Uh, one of the best examples is in Meteors. Meteors regularly uh, is just like an instant, right? Like it just goes down across the screen. But uh, when he gets jackpot Meteors, he gets a gigantic Meteor that fills up the screen. So. Like, here's a good example of just how it works, like, in that same way. He outranges a lot of characters, and like I said before, a lot of characters do not have a good return off of mid-range pokes. In fact, Faust is one of the, again, the few characters that has a very good return off mid-range pokes. Not only that, because of how much better item toss is in this game, it means usually you have to play around item toss a lot better. Faust does have some things in FDC. This is really one of his only complicated things along with uh, really, I'd say that is literally his only complicated thing, is really, like, execution-wise, it's just FTC. But basically, he can cancel his jump 2k into FTC, which lets him halt his momentum. So he can use that to control space, and use it also for mix-ups as well. Also, jump 2k in this game is bra, like... Oh yeah, here's jump 2k, uh, here's FTC. So you can see him actually mix, <laughs> mix you up with it. So he does jump 2k, a low, a very low jump 2k to the ground, right? Low, very low jump 2k. He jumps again, FTC, so he, he cancels his jump to K into FTC and jump K, so it's an overhead. I don't know how fast it can be, but I'm pretty sure Krakatoa once said it's like what? It can be like up to like, it's like between like 14, like 18 frames or some shit. Oh, 14 to 24 frames, yeah. Okay, and um, another thing to keep in mind, Venom is still good in this game. He is quite good. So this is one thing, we'll talk about Venom a little more in this match. So Venom's thing is he's got, he's very stable. His Game plan is basically he chips you from full screen. Uh, a lot of his strategy is built around making you have to chase him. And his other thing is, of course, he has a lot of setups. But he's basically considered like the setup character. Like people figure out a lot of shit for him. Uh, if you really want a good like thing to keep in mind uh, while you watch him, watch how much chip each ball does and like what kind of setups he does. So basically think of him as like a sub play kind of zoner. <laughs> um, he has a teleport like Testament. Also, these are very plus. Oh yeah, there's teleport. He can always teleport to a ball. It doesn't matter if it's on the screen or not. Oh yeah, Dark Angel. This is his Oki setup. Wants the chip. Uh, Venom also has an instant overhead as well. That's another thing too, but I don't think we've seen it. Mad Struggle. It can also function as a dive kick. Sometimes Venom uses it as a dive kick, but it's also an, an instant overhead. So like a lot of Venom's normals are like, he is also a mid-range character, but he does not get anything off of mid-range pokes. A lot of it is just like he sets up balls if he if he's correct. But I mean, like it is pretty adv advantageous for him to be to, like set up stuff and like be in positions like this because like even this position, Nage has to guess if he's gonna teleport out or not. Teleport is gonna be very very strong if you're unfamiliar with it. Uh, he's got really good air buttons as well. In fact, he's got like one of the buttons that a few characters literally cannot answer in some in instances. Um, Venom's like a lot of training mode, right? That's like the main thing about him. Uh, but his his kit and like how he zones, like it's it's pretty straightforward. You you kind of get it. He's a lot of zoning. He's really good at setting up in neutral. He's got a lot of like very direct like you control neutral most of the time and you understand it. Right? There are matchups obviously where he doesn't. 
but like a lot of it is straightforward in the sense that you know once you figured out most of his like his kit i mean all there really is to him is figuring out a lot of setups though he has a shit ton of setups i really can't emphasize that enough that he has like you know if you back throw them in the corner he has a very specific setup for that if they if he forward throws you he has a very specific setup for that if he throws you mid screen he has a very specific setup for that if he throws you you know midway to the corner he has like you're like you know halfway to the corner he has a specific setup for that so it's like he's a lot of training mode in that way faust he has some matchups that can be annoying but like he's like one of the most stable characters in the game which sounds weird because he's the rng character his uh footsies are very like his footsies actually you know what i'm gonna put jam in, in here as well if, if soul is also in here i think they're if so if sin Faust, you know, if sin soul in here the jam should be in there too when it comes to faust he's like he's just again like he's another character where his mechanic is useful there are situations where it comes up a lot and like you have to play around it especially if you're close range but even if you're a character that has like a lot of range or like is good at movement you have to consider items because his items are so good like faust is consistently like one of the best characters in guilty Gear. in fact like he's been considered very strong even in this version but uh, the last version he was considered like really weak was like what it was like s reload so at this point he had been top tier for around 16 or 7 no at this point this is around 11 years i think when rev 2 released uh it would be around 11 years he was considered a top tier character let's go chip and and a uh, hey Yoon. a lot of people have been asking me about hey Yoon, so Vers old versions like before rev 2 or sorry rev 2.1 chip was considered or sorry 2.0 well, I guess it's 2. Point, it's 2.10. Basically, Chip was the most broken character. He's like tied for it, right? He was very, very strong. Most people consider him like on par with Johnny. Um, but this is right after he got nerfed. So this version he got fucking obliterated. His he had like very oppressive set play. We talked about it yesterday, I think, or no, the day before. And um basically they they eliminated that. So at this point he has no looping Oki like that. And a lot of his Oki is also like you can RPS around mid-screen. So as a result, he became a lot weaker, and especially the characters like Heyun. In fact, I think Heyun typically like uh Heyun, I think, lost this matchup, right? Like I think in older versions, Heyun lost the chip, but I think in this version, Heyun beats chip, right? Because like the damage is just like so fucked up that you feel risk reward. But in older versions, I remember like it just didn't matter because Chip could 6p through Fireball on Wake Up. Like the matchup changed a lot at this point. I just remember bare minimum it changed a lot. But basically Chip is a lot more, he's got a lot more options in this game than Strive and they're a lot more effective. He's got much better frame data. His frame data is infinitely better. I'm not joking. You have seen only Strive Chip frame data. This character will fucking make you sick. Like most things are pretty familiar in the sense like, you know, close dash, Three frames, standard. Uh, five frames, 5k. I think that's standard in X-Drive. Here's where it starts getting fucking weird, though. He has a four frame close slash. You can't see this, but this is plus two. So he's got a frame trap close slash that close slashes into itself, right? He's got a seven frame fire slash. It's extremely fast. Doesn't get used that much, though, because it, it's easily been. Uh, 5h is 10 frames. It's pretty good as a counter poke. It gets a lot, a huge amount of return on, on counter hit. 6p has got one of the best 6p's in the game 6k not really that great honestly it's it's like only really good in danger time which in that case it becomes incredibly good 6h is like he has like a specific route with it but otherwise doesn't get used 2s is like one of his best buttons seven frames uh four frames active 11 frames total it's very fast oh yeah all of his moves are very fast total duration i forgot to mention so like uh for example like far ass is like let's see it is literally 27 frames total 5H is about 33 frames. Oh yeah, 2S is uh, 2S is 22 frames. Basically, he's fast. And then he has this shit. This move, you basically cannot anti-air it. Some character, only very specific characters can anti-air this move. In fact, this used to be his old, like an old meme move. It's like what? There's like I think the ch the website still exists. It's like what? Just ib dot air throw or some shit. It's like some website like that. But basically, um, again, this is like some. This is one of the problems with Exert because a lot of people don't understand their experience is very like linear, and or it's like very like it's very restrictive to what like character they play. I've seen like a lot of Sin players, for example, be like, "Oh yeah, this 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 move's not that great," but it's like a matter of like you know they they have a very strong answer because their character excels at it, right? When it comes to uh, like most characters, they just can't beat this. They have to just I, they literally have to 
like air IB it and then throw it after. He can also make himself safe out of these sort of situations. Like another good example is jump H. This is like another one of his infamous examples with like hard to anti-air moves, except with this one, he can actually always escape if you actually do air IB it. So depending on the situation, you also have to be aware of that. Alpha on this blade is a lot better though. It's it's on it. Well, it's not really that much better. It's It works differently. So it's not the same. Gamma is infinitely better in this game. It's so fucking strong. In fact, most people would say it's probably his best move. So good. It's always plus five, no matter what. Gives him great combos. Can be one of his ways of like knowledge checking you. And once uh, once the startup starts, I wonder if it actually mentions it here. Uh, basically, once he starts doing this move, it will always come out. There's like a f amount of frames where if you actually hit him during like maybe the first, what is it, five, six frames, it will always come out. So even if it trades, It'll, it, he'll, the projectile will come out and it'll, it'll trade in his favor. He has teleport. He has teleport in place, forward, airborne, in front and behind. He's got Genro, which in this game, you have to air throw it. You cannot do anything else because it's, I think it's a, a little bit faster. Uh, it has a little more envol, and just by nature of how how much better his 6p is, it means that if you jump with the button and you fall, he will anti air you. In fact, in this game, Genro is actually not as a mix up. Genro is actually a way of making you jump so that he anti airs you. And then rest show, rest show. Uh, a lot of it is like pretty much the same, except in this game, uh, if you do said shoe, you're basically asking for death. Um, he's got shuriken still, and then his new thing or his equivalent. This is the important one: is wall cling. So he can always like cling to the wall. And this was like how he used to do his old mix up, but it doesn't come up nearly as much. It is not nearly as common, uh, but usually if he's cornered and he has movement, then it comes up. So basically he's got really good buttons. So even though like a lot of characters out risk reward him, like he has so many options that it's hard for characters to keep up with him. So he's like a great example of a character that like you, you can't just view not like damage numbers because he's he's got such good buttons that there's a chance you never get to start your pressure. Even though Chip is like still like a shadow of his like former self in this version, he's infinitely better than like Scribe. Like I would say like even like release Chip is like has nothing on this version of Chip just off of like how much shit he has. Heyun was basically like low mid tier. Heyun's thing was literally just that she did damage. Her whole mechanic is literally she just does damage. She has some sub play mechanics like to it, but like she just RPSs with you and she does damage. Her Oki isn't that great. It's actually very easy to beat, but it's a knowledge check. Basically, her thing is that like uh, her kit is very her kit isn't that great, but she can vary a lot of stuff and she has like some fast move. Like she has like a really good TP and she has Shinken. Shinken basically will like stun almost every combo. You link it, uh, you link one into the other, but it's basically a more optimized way of doing. Uh, it's basically an optimization thing. That's basically the really outside of the baseline stuff with Hayden of like, you know, oh, like, you know, they have their Gatlings are weird and they have like, you know, ball control. It's like, that's really the only hard thing about them. They're a lot more about like understanding, like, you know, where do you gamble? Where do you like RPS in? And that's one reason why, like, if you guess wrong against them enough, that was a duty burst. Oh, actually, never mind. Summit had, that was like last round. But like you can see, like there are situations where even though Hayun's not that great, if Hayun guesses right like once or twice, Chip's probably gonna die. You also have to remember that in this game, some characters are built around stun combos rather than than health. A lot of the time, it's it's actually more preferable to like stun Chip and then kill him rather than just like go straight for damage. Uh, another thing is some weird moves are like minus on hit as well. Like uh, that's like Hayun's main pressure tool with uh, Q and 4K, right? I think it is. A lot of her game plans built around Hayabusa, but some characters can disrespect it. Very very easily and sometimes like even if you're right you don't get a huge amount of return unless it's a very specific hit oh that's so bad yeah Shinken. he actually gets worse combos mid-screen than in the or sorry in the corner than in mid-screen as you can see there too that's another thing that's also new oh yeah this is like this is why like if you play this version this is why people just meme on people for saying oh yeah strive damage i mean it's chip but like look at how much risk that was in this game Look at how much risk that was, and consider the fact that if <laughs> if Summit did not have Verse, there's like a 95% chance Cha 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 would have just won off having 50 meter here. Honestly, like this character is like, thing about them is like literally their frame data is like kind of weird. It's like not that great. They have like some moves that are really good, like, you know, TP is infamous. Uh, they have a really fast 6H, it's like seven frames. Although again, it's my 23, so they have a pretty good TP, where is it? It's like seven frames, very good. Um, but their weakness is in, 
honestly their mechanic one of their mechanics with tuning ball is like basically all their oki is built around this right it can be very easy to os against uh it creates like a mind game but it's also like you know, it's not it's not that great for hanging that combined with the fact that they're very close range is kind of a problem the only thing they really have is basically just that they do a shit ton of damage and they're kind of hard to burst she's like basically considered one of the robbery characters uh she's got like one like a lot of stuff that she's like can used to her advantage i don't know why like she has a hurt box thing as you can see here it's like large body large hurt box means she can be harassed by zoners and vulnerable during to more damage in combos but this isn't exactly true another thing she has is her hurt box is really uh her hurt box is actually kind of good it's some out some matchups actually like are impacted by how bad her hurt box is for them like i remember jam players hated heyoon all the jam commas don't work on heyoon uh yeah it's actually a girl in a robot as you can see. Um, who else? Who else is next? I guess we can talk about Sin. Sin and Soul. Is there a match of me versus Kizzy still? Let's... Both these characters are very direct. Actually, this is a this is one of the like the more straightforward matchups. So they're like, it's interesting. Cause this matchup, for example, is not good for Soul. But like it's very easy for him to still like kill. Like to still like kill Sin. But Sin's like thing is basically he's like a god mid-range control character. He's probably the best in the game, uh, just with Beak Driver alone. He's got really good damage from mid-range. He's like, again, one of the exceptions that he gets a lot of damage from mid-range. This character is actually basically the Nago function. So how he works is you can see he has a meter in the bottom left. He just did one of his special moves, Beak Driver. He can cancel one of his special moves into another special move in exchange for calorie meter this means that if he has a dp like he can dp for example he can cancel his dp on block or on hit into another move and either start his pressure or combo you but what happens is if he runs out of food he basically gets stunned his thing is every time he gets like a knockdown or something he can eat most of the time this is really like one of the best examples of a matchup where solo would like struggle this is really the only ma type of matchup where he struggles he even though he's like a very well-rounded character he's still kind of sucks against characters who are longer range against him but of course like he's very good at forcing like he's still very good at like getting in like all you have to do is like play safer to compensate but he's like got really good pressure right a lot of this character is like again he's way more of a way more of a mid-range character you can see i'm not like going in and like forcing that much stuff because there's not much point to you. you don't really get much until you're like in this position in the corner with meter so oh. Big call out for me. I'm I'm kind of nice. Look at me. He's basically just an RPS character with like a very stable mid range. So like the game plan is you play kind of safe until you get in, and then you go ham. Sin on the other hand is way way more based around. He can be in mid range very well, and he can be in close range very well. But everything else is a little more situational based on the matchup. But again, like you have to always remember he's got very good air buns, and he's got some very good ways of controlling ground. So again, like you know, it's very it's very like situational for both these characters, but. These are like one of the best ways of showing both their strengths is that like even in a bad matchup like this, Soul is actually very capable. He's again, in comparison to Strive, he's a lot more of a general well-rounded character, but um, he's much more execution heavy and he also, uh, he also requires a lot more patience. So Beak Driver is a two hit move. It goes through projectiles and it gives him a huge combo on counter hit or some specific hit. So like, this is basically one of his main ways for controlling space. It's probably the one you're gonna be using the most against like most characters. It covers uh, this, like used to even beat some characters like single-handedly, like like Potemkin, like this move like obliterated Potemkin. Oh, I'm about to die. He also does a lot of damage. I had a lot of risks, but he does a lot of damage in general. That's like one thing that he has that's kind of unusual for a lot of mid-range characters is he has a very, very strong close range air button. This one, jump 6H. This is one of his, like, one of the best, like, like close range moves, like, for starting offense or, like, forcing things. Because it's so just, like, it vacuums in and it also gives him a good combo. So here's, like, a good example. So, like, you can see here, I play very aggressive because Kizzy does not have money and calories. This means, like, basically if he does a special move, he's going to go into hunger. But he just does, like, a move, knocks me down, and he eats anyway. So this is basically how it works. So in exchange, like, rather than, like, him losing it over time, he has to be active to refill his, his calories. And sometimes this is relevant because, like, he can't always get uh, food and Oki. But, like, for example, if he gets a hard knockdown with uh, the multi-stab move, he cannot get Oki. Oh, yeah, I'm dead. Oh, this kills me. Oh yeah, he also has an RTL that he can use three times. So 
You can use this also sometimes on the wake up to get out of the corner. I think that actually is relevant in our set. Oh my god, I, I'm surprised I didn't catch. Oh yeah, Sin also has a, a unique backdash. So his backdash goes a lot further than other characters. It's a lot longer, but it's a lot, like, it, it goes further. So there are some situations where, like, his backdash is either really, really good for, like, giving up space or, like, you know, clearing space. Or it can be really bad because, like, it's it's such a long backdash. He doesn't get to use it that often. You can see a lot of, like, Sin's very good at just controlling space and, like, using his buttons to kind of, like, start stuff. And he uses the threat of... Like, especially things like Elk. Like, Elk is only zero on block, but of course, like, he can always... Where is it? He can always, uh, cancel. Where's the food meter thing? I'm sure there's, like, a, a bit about food meter here. Oh, maybe not. But, like, basically, uh, as long as he has calories, you have to be considerate of it. Next is well, the, the, the PS4 stream, too. So, Kako is one of the, uh, one of the better Rams as well. Um, so Ram in this game is actually quite bad. She's very high execution, and... She doesn't really get much off of her her pokes. I know it sounds the exact opposite <laughs> exact opposite of of Strive, but basically there's like two things she has that are very like she has two main knowledge checks. One of them is basically in 2S, 2H, which is this. This, these moves are not great, but if you get hit by them, then they basically kill you. If you play a friend who doesn't know how to play fighting games, just pick Ram and do this to them. Then she has like target moves or target strings, which is like, you know, like the Tekken strings, which is this. Depending on which combination she does, it's a different one. I don't even remember all of them. I just remember like there's one for an overhead. And that's really the only one you need to think about. So like you can see depending on what she does, 5pp, 5tp, 5k, 5pp, <laughs> depending on what she does, she gets a different order, right? Every time. A lot of these are not really that useful, but here are the ones that really, this is really the one that, that people abuse. It's this one. They usually do a string into this. It's a plus frame overhead. If you do not instant block this, this move will fuck you up. You have to instant block it. She also has a low version from it. That's an equivalent that is basically just like, a, that is basically just, it's extremely punishable. So it's not that, it's not that good. But like, if you don't know how to deal with either the P version or the overhead, so you can see basically depending on which one she decides to do, it's, it's either an overhead or a low. And there's no tell outside of the order of strings that she does. You don't need to fuzzy block it. You can easily, you can easily instant block it and punish it. Extremely easy. So, Milia, on the other hand, is a lot more grounded. She has like, her air moves are not as strong. She has some good air moves in Jump H. But basically, each character has a way of answering Jump H. If you don't know how to answer her Jump H, you might as well not even play against her. It's just one of those things again. But the other aspect of it is she has Pin. Her offense is infinitely stronger in this game. It's so much better. She basically gets two mix-ups off of a S disc. And it's also very easy for her to lead into the same situation. Milia, she's like one of the better scramble characters as well. But again, like she is very high execution if you play against someone who punishes uh, Pin a lot or you don't have Pin. So like once he uses pin, see, he has to pick it up. Kako bursts specifically so he does not get pin. So now I bet Kako will entirely play just to get pin off the screen. Yeah, see? And now they probably won't play forward. Oh, never mind. They let him get pin again. But basically almost all of the strategy is built around just avoiding Milia from getting pin once it's out. Because once she has pin, it's basically an RPS situation when she air dashes near you. Is she going to throw pin or is she going to jump bait? If she throws pin, it will beat every anti-air you do except air IB. But obviously, if you do jump bait, she will not have the same timing. Um, basically, in order to be very consistent, in order to be super consistent, you have to do the routes that don't require pin. But they are very, very difficult. They're very character specific. I'm pretty sure they are literally character specific. As in, like, I'm pretty sure each one you have to do a different order in order to actually knock them down from it. Pin is like, again, since it's a very easy option, it means that if you lose it and you have to use the harder one, if you if you haven't practiced the harder one, it'll feel like shit. You'll basically give up every knockdown if you don't know how to do it. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't even come up that often yet. Most of these like situations, again, uh, Ram is not that great. And specifically, if you play a character that's really good at fighting her in the air, she fucking suffers. So, Melia, sit, Melia time. Secret Garden. This is another, um, this is her, uh, essentially her better mix up. So, if she ends in pin, ideally she wants to end in this setup, which is uh, Secret Garden. This is basically just like a even better, an even better uh, uh, H disc. Think of it like that. 
Is Ram not worth learning? I mean, if you like her, you should play her anyways. You can absolutely win with Ram. She's just like very difficult. So this is like the thing that Ram's like is the hard part. This doesn't look that like, this is not look that hard, but um, you have to micro dash. It's hard to even see, but you have to micro dash and you have to delay each Rekka in order to do this combo correctly. Each, each time she does this, she's manually delaying it basically. She has to mainly delay some part of it. If she fumbles one part, it all drops. This is really why, like, no one plays her. Because, I mean, they, right there, I mean, you literally just saw it. She, <laughs> Kako still dropped it. And as a result, it let uh, Ranger get out for free. Well, I mean, not for free, but it was like a guaranteed dead angle. Even when, look at this, when Ranger has pin, or like, has Oki, Ranger backdashes twice to grab pin and then does a mix up. Which still works, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, 6k in this game is also much better. Uh, Zato's 6k, not really, but uh, Milia's 6k is much better in this game. I want to watch another Ram set, but let's put on Takehara, because Takehara is the best Ram, hands down, free. Takehara is so good. You may have heard Answer is really bad, and uh, Answer is like complicated. Answer is not terrible, but not really in the same way as you'd think. Answer has a very clear weakness of his Oki has a a RPS situation behind it, right? He how he works is he knocks you down and he sets scrolls basically, depending on which he sets up or like the situation or buttons he presses is how they get set up, right? Answer's thing is that he can dash through, it can be invul, and he can also like he can left right you and all this shit. But one problem he has is that a lot of it is mids or highs, and as a result, he has to kind of call out lows. Uh, he can do this, but honestly, this is kind of a shitty way of doing it. Basically, he can do this from his uh, his scroll. Honestly, this is one of the worst ways you can do it, because it's very punishable if this is blocked. How answer has to go low is basically he goes off of scroll and then he just does regular low. But of course, this means that he is open in some situations, not all of them, to people RPSing or playing around it. So basically, if you view it like that, he's just like a regular, like, kind of character that struggles against Blitz in, like, a mild way. Like, he's definitely bad against Blitz, but it's a little overstated. But I mean, like, in general, he does, he is weaker against Blitz than most characters. But what he has is his neutral's actually pretty good. A lot of people slept on his neutral, like, his far ass and his 5H are really, really good. He's got a pretty good 2K in the... Was it 2D? And his jump S and jump H are pretty good. But the thing about him is, oh yeah, his card wire C too. Card wire C is very, very strong. Card in general is pretty good. But um, his mechanic is still based around this, right? Like the the scroll shit and dash dashing around it. Instant blocking the DPS or like instant blocking into blitz or other things like that can be very effective against him and also just essentially like emphasizes the RPS aspect of it. So like, again, I don't think he's quite terrible against Blitz. Like he's he's definitely more than just like, oh, he loses to Blitz, but he's not great in general. Like if you watch like a player like Faulty defense, like Faulty is like like super, super good, right? Extremely good player, extremely smart player. I was like a, a big like Axel, or not Axel, sorry. Uh, I was a big, um, I was a big uh, answer hater when he first released and I played against Faulty and I was like, wow, like Faulty had a good strategy. Or oh, you can see Oki here. Here's how his Oki works, by the way. So you can see a button on the scroll, cancel the button, the move, usually air dash, depending if you IB or not from this range, usually this means I think you can get out for free. Uh, at least from that range, I don't really remember. I think, but his buttons are really good on the ground. Uh, but he gets he gets pretty decent return off of his like straight pokes in the air more so than Ram, but the situation that Ram leads into is way stronger. Also, Answer has a parry and uh, he just parried and oh he almost died. <laughs> I was gonna say he parried and died, but uh, his parry is not great either. You can OS it very easily. This is like even though Ram is very hard, and again like I've emphasized this right like or sorry I think she's very difficult. I mean they're both very difficult. They're literally both on this list. <laughs> <laughs> but Ram's thing is like her offense is fucking insane. Like she's just insanely hard and it's really hard to get to that point. Like if she's in this position, it's like her game to win. Like it's it's so hard to get out unless you have resources or you have like a specific way of getting out. It also depends on 
uh like just general support okay here's dizzy this is a uh, kazuki shout out to kazuki kazuki long time dizzy god she has great mobility and her set plate is incredibly good and she has very high damage in fact she's like a contender for like higher like set play damage her thing is her buttons are terrible i mean they're like i shouldn't say they're terrible but they're long range but like kind of stubby and like kind of like not that great and a lot of her pokes don't lead into stuff but if she gets positions where she gets to establish her set play like if she sets up fish or if she sets up bubbles and you hit into bubbles then she does a shit ton of damage pretty much her baseline with uh fish is like very simple like you can just do like basic fish okey and it's not that terrible it's not great but like it's not terrible but she's basically like half the character she is when she you develop her and you start doing more advanced techniques with her like uh when you start implementing things like fire bubble or like regular bubble into your step play then you start doing a shit ton of damage and a shit ton of stun as well it's actually like people tend to sleep on uh, how good she can be with damage. Her main thing is that her mobility is very good, uh, but she does also have the problem of, like I said, her buttons aren't great, but she also has the lowest stun in the game with Chip, which again is a major flaw, and especially in this game, because uh, in this game, she actually has slightly more health. She's she's like, uh, I think like 1.09, which in older games, she's like, what, 1.15? Basically, she dies very fast and like when she's in this position, it's quite bad because all she has is movement. But because all she has is movement, it's very easy to predict what she's doing. Yeah, she literally gets dizzy. So like if there's if she does not get to start, then it's quite bad. She's actually also quite a good character. Most people would say she's right outside of top five as well. The way she's inclined to play Keefaway or play is also more along the lines of Keefaway. So um Jam's thing is she's actually like she's much more of a rushdown character. She's basically all rushdown. She's way more focused on being right in your face. She's got incredibly fast buttons. If you are not used to like exert buttons compared to strive, Jam's existence will fry your fucking brain. Like her 2D is six frames. A lot of her buttons are like no slower than than eight frames. She's got a built-in parry. Her damage is like uh, it's decently high. It's not hugely high, but she's she's uh it's like above average i would say her main thing is that she's just so good at scrambling with you and fighting with you like straight up like she's so good at rushing you down and being right in your face that like if you really like like characters you just fucking go ham with jam is like 100 percent your your type of character um she's got like a bunch of options she has her own stance like uh real quick i'll show this is her parry this is what happens when you parry successfully it's when you do four six i think it's four six right she will parry and she can either do a follow-up from it or uh she can just hold it depends on the situation she can use it as an ant here that's usually where she gets the most use this is her six stage it goes above it's a high crush and it's about what 10 frames it's, it's like really fast it's extremely fast gives a huge amount of damage on counter hit not so good on regular hit um but it leads into puff ball on counter hit which is this is her like this is one of her signature things uh more so known for this in plus r because she had like a very very powerful puff ball in that game. Puff ball is basically just like a plus advancing move from a stance. She has four moves out of her stance that she just dashes forward. She has a slide that goes through you, usually for throwing. She has a low, and then she has two versions of puff ball. One that goes through, one goes, uh, one crosses you up, one's right in front of you. Her uh, air normals are extremely fast. I don't think she's, she doesn't have an air normal that's slower than six frames, right? Or no, I mean, technically she does because jump D, I think. Jump D and jump to K. Her jump K is like, what, five frames? Her jump H is like five frames. Her jump P is like six frames. Her jump S is like six frames. Like she has very, very fast moves. I'm not joking. Her 5K is like four frames. Her far S is like six frames. It is very, very fast. But her thing is based around these things right here. It's cards. So uh, she has three different versions of card. Basically they upgrade her special moves. She has a, a tr uh, like a dragon kick, a like a fireball. I don't, I'm literally calling out what they are. It's she literally, it's like a full screen, like kick. It's <laughs> a full screen kick, basically. She has an overhead that gives her a combo if you charge it up. And she has a better DP if she charges it up. She buffed her Eugen, which makes it a much better combo tool and also lets her get more damage off of it. Again, like Dizzy is going to be very in control in a lot of the situations. So now see, this time he charged Gekirin card, which is an overhead. This means when he does an overhead, or when he does get here in, it'll either give him a better card or a better combo, or it'll make his mix up faster. And then Blitz as well. If you're not familiar with Blitz, it's basically just like a parry for 25 meter. Her DP, she does have a DP, but it's quite bad. It is a little profileable unless she has a card. 
Oh yeah, and her 2D is also jump cancelable. She has a lot of jump cancelable moves. This one is pretty important. <laughs> as you can see, 2D, I, a jump. Oh yeah, she does have reverse beats as well. She has some reverse beats. It's not entirely, but I don't know. I feel like it's just like extra. It's like, I don't know, she has reverse speeds, but like everything else, it's just like extra on top of it to me. <laughs> oh yeah, so here is, uh, this is what happens if you fully charge. It's like what, 60 frames? Uh, it buffs your move to where like when you do it, it's like blue and it's like, it's basically much better in some ways. So like in uh, her DP, it's like long as fuck. If it's Geki, then it's like, it's so fast. It's so big. It's also a lot of damage. And Charge Region does like 300 damage. It's like 200 damage on its own or some shit. Oh yeah, this is another thing Jamf has. She has a clean hit super. This is actually very important. This is one of her, her better things. This move has such a high amount of minimum damage guaranteed that it's like super important. She can miss this, but uh, if she clean hits, it'll do the first hit as you can see, and then it'll zoom in like this. It does a lot of damage. It's also, <laughs> it can lead into another like gimmicky thing, but I don't know if Flux will do it. Let's see. Never mind. Sometimes they do air dash behind you after that. Basically, Jam's thing is uh, she's like entirely just like a ham ass rushdown character. She's got a lot of like really strong, like very good up close buttons. Like if we look at her frame data, you'll see what I mean. Like three frame 5p, four frame 5k, six frame close slash, six frame far slash, six h is 14 frames, which is really good for your six h, honestly. Uh, five frame 2k, six frame 2s, uh, six frame 2d, six frame jump p. 5 frame jump K, 5 frame jump S, 5 frame jump H, 7, oh it is actually no no slower than 7 frames, so 7 frame jump H, jump D. She's got a lot of options. She's like very, she's a very interesting character. She's one of the more diverse characters in ways you can play her because like, you can, you can really excel in like either Ryuji and Geki or uh, Ken Rokaku. But I mean, this is like, I mean, when you see Jam, this is usually what people are gonna be. <laughs> this is usually what they're going to be talking about. <laughs> it's literally just this move. Eno in this game is actually top three. She's incredibly strong. In fact, if you've played if you've played Eno and Strive, you're probably going to feel the, like it's it's probably going to feel like you're playing Eno on steroids. Like she is obscenely fucking insane in this game. She is so cursed. She is so so strong. Where's let's just put on Dari. Daru vs. Kadako. Look at how happy Otashi is. He's like, I just unblocked with someone. Uh, Mei in this game and Ino in this game. These characters are entirely different. They are like not even close. Mei in this game is much more of a... She's very similar to Soul in some ways, but think of her as like a, an aerial Soul. <laughs> she's essentially a more close range aerial version of Soul. In exchange for this, you cannot fight her in the air. I don't think a single character beats her in the air. Either if you beat her in, in terms of speed, you cannot beat her in damage. If you beat her in damage, you can't beat her in speed. It's hard to anti-air her. She gets a shit ton of damage and she set plays you if you are wrong. Hers is, can be a true high or low. How she does it is a little weird, but essentially she sets up Dolphin and she can fast fall from it or she can uh, do a few other weird things. But you'll see what I mean. So essentially this is how she works. She can set up Dolphins like this in neutral that are more like, uh, I think they're negative edge. That's like a lot of her, her set play stuff. So Eno in this game, let's talk about Eno. Eno can set play, is essentially the most reliable, probably the most reliable set play character in this version. She uh, does a lot of damage. Her mix up's really hard to block. She gains a lot of meter and they made it very easy for her to start her pressure. So I'll give you a good example. After every knockdown, she gets a free note, right? Off of, off of her BNB. She can wire see it, or if she does a less optimal ender, she can end into 5D YRC. 5D YRC uh, gives her a projectile and enables like note. So this is one of her ways of setting up, uh, is setting up pressure. Now, when she makes you block a note, again, similarly to Milia, she gets around at least two mix ups. But on top of that, she's also a lot faster in this game. In fact, you can see it when she dashes at you. In fact, watch her dash forward at Kadako here. Coming up here. He dropped it. I mean, you can see how much damage this did anyways. This is, again, this is just, this is off guessing wrong. <laughs> and this is to me. This is not like Chip. Like, here's a good example of me. Me does a shit ton of damage. Knockdown. Knockdown. Went for, I don't know what that was. But I think Kadako fucked up. But that's basically how her, her 
shit works. So you can see, it sets up dolphin, rides it, and uh, goes, sorry, it goes dolphin into dolphin, rides the dolphin on top of the dolphin, <laughs> and then cancels from the second dolphin. So, uh, I mean, as you can see, like, look at what he's doing right now. He's just doing a lot of, like, jump forward, jump S, jump forward, jump S, jump forward, jump S, jump back, jump H. Oh, yeah, so here's another, here's the thing that made, you know, particularly fucked up in this version. They changed how her dash arc works. So when she does 663, she goes at an angle like this, as you can see. See, she's going up, then she stops, she's going down. <laughs> so... She can do this to cross you up or just to do regular, like, safe jump Oki as well. And, oh yeah, Eno also does a lot of damage in this game in general. I forgot in general how much she actually does, but I believe in this race, she's, her damage is also, like, above average. I mean, like, it, it's like a great example of just... <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys want to learn about Johnny, huh? Everyone wants to play Johnny. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> Classic. So, Johnny's thing is that uh, he has a mechanic based around his coins. It's missed finer levels. If he uh, hits you with a coin, his missed finer level goes up. If he uses missed finer once it's leveled, it will use the level effectively. So you have to use the coins to get to it again. So his game plan is basically use coins to get to an advanced missed finer level. The reason for that is he can actually cancel his normal into missed finer stance and cancel missed finer stance to actually make himself plus. A lot of his moves regularly, if you just do far ass into like, you know, 2H or something, like you may be like minus like 30 or some shit like that. But if you do far ass 2H missed finer cancel, you would actually be not minus 30, you'd be like plus five. So like beyond just like being safe, you'd be plus. And the more misfinder levels you have, the more that number increases. Essentially, he can leave stance faster as he levels up. So right now, basically, Johnny's mechanic is you want to get levels and then you keep snowballing into levels. You only get them on hit, but coin is about what? Five frames total or five frames startup and it's plus eight on block. So if you block coin, I mean, he'll use it either in neutral to like check you because if it trades, like if he throws coin and it hits you, then like it's in his favor. Or they OTG you because uh, OTG coins also count as well. A lot of his normals are really good range, and not only that, combined with the fact that he's got uh, Mistfinder and he can convert into Mistfinder means that he usually does a lot of damage, and he's usually very good at starting pressure or uh, basically killing you from blocking in neutral. He goes into something that gives him levels, right? At this point, he's level 3, so now his offense is fucked up. You're about to die. Uh, Dario guesses wrong. Johnny was considered the best graph player in the game, by the way. This can be burst safe, which is why Dario doesn't burst. Here's another thing about Miss Finer. Not only does the startup or the recovery go faster, but when you level it up, it becomes much faster to start up as well. It burns through projectiles, so if you ever see someone do a projectile in neutral, you can always react and do Miss Finer. Uh, even if you don't have levels, if the if the projectile is too slow, you can always punish it. Now, the higher level it is, the more they roll. For example, there's the case of if you get counter hit by this, for example, if Daru is in the corner, he would be wall stuck for about three seconds. But instead, he'll roll for about two. But uh, Johnny gets a combo anyways. With this super, though, this one, this is one of his more important supers. And this is why he basically, people don't really consider him having a resource to, to play around. He has a super that he can from Frozen into. This is called Treasure Hunt. You can see if you look in the bottom right, he currently has five coins, right? When he does this super, he gains two more coins back. So when he does this, he essentially gains the same amount of coins back for what he used, depending on which item or like which character it is. It's like, it's some like meme, but basically he gets, he gets more coins back and uh, the resource does not come up as often. So you can see they just use it in neutral. It's like control space. It's a good damage off. Actually, I think he's going to kill off this. Yeah, he's going to unblockable. So he has an unblockable as well. Uh, Bakasai. This is actually the most, probably the most balanced version of it in the game. So this is not a true unblockable like it used to be in Plus R. If you're familiar with in Plus R, it's not the same. When he does this, uh, one, uh, first of all, you can get out. He can checkmate you from this. But uh, he does like usually one or two coins, depending on your meter or like position or health. Forces you to block. He dashes forward, Mistfinder, it staggers you no matter what through it, he gets a combo, you are dead.
it's very specific that he can do, do the unblockable, like, and it's not really that rewarding unless he has meter already. But essentially, to clear out rounds, it's one of the best ways to do it. Dumb D. Oh god, so now Johnny has coins. So now Daru can lose from here on out. Yeah, see, like, so, see, this is, like, a great example of why coins are so important. This is basically the entire game against Johnny. At this point, when he gets level 2, the entire game changes, right? So let's say he gets in this position without level 2. This would not give him a combo. This would be the end of his combo. Since he has level 2, he gets to continue his combo, which in turn gives him levels again. Even though he bursted midway through the combo, he still gets a second coin. But see, this is where Johnny is the most fucked up. This is basically where... This is what makes him a demon character. So he has his Y-hander, YRC. This basically just makes you block. He can go... He can air dash high or low on you. So here's the thing. He's like plus 8. Plus like 11. That's, that's like a one frame gap. I'm still like plus 9. That position, you cannot get out. Right? Even when you air dash over him, you are still right on top of him. If Omida was like a smidge faster, he could have just 6-speed air through for free. I mean, another situation is obvious. Oh, he's just dead anyways. So if you press a button, he can whiff punish you with Miss Finer at level 3, right? If you jump, he can miss fight at level 3 you and punish you, right? This means you have to commit to to catch him, right? If To get close to him, like, he outranges you, right? So if he's at this range, he's winning. So you have to dash forward or do something. But anything you do, if he backdashes, he will kill you. If he stands still and you guess wrong, he'll kill you. Like, this is like, it, it looks ominous. I mean, it looks ominous in this freeze frame, but like... I mean, it is. Oh yeah, Gianni also has one of the better 6Ps in the game, and it's also jump cancelable. Though, honestly, he doesn't even really need it, which should tell you a lot about this character. <laughs> See, like, Dara's being- oh, he's dead. Oh, never mind. I mean, I'll dial it in. Here's how it normally works, by the way. So if you jump, <laughs> you die. That's actually the Johnny experience. It's like you're in a tense-ass situation. He's level 3. And like, I can tell you right now, I can tell you literally right now, Daru did this, he saw Omido Wirasi and his heart sank. Like, I know exactly what it felt like. It's like you get in the heat of the moment and Johnny gets to this position and it's like, it's like the momentum and like the, the momentum and like the atmosphere. It's just like, it's like, it just stops and you're just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally just like that. <laughs> Omida was like, okay. Johnny's thing is basically almost everything that, that comes from him is just so advantageous. Not because of the rates current. Like, most characters get, like, some, like, in terms of damage or, like, Oki, they could theoretically have a better return than him off, like, a lot of the scrambles. But a lot of the situations that actually end up, like, happening. Like, because of how he works, is if, is if he ends with a coin, like, even if he takes, like, 200 damage, but he ends on, like, level 2 or level 3, he pretty much won that situation. Like, that's that's the way it works. Here's, like, the basics. He has some of the best anti-airs, and, like, 5P is an insanely good anti -air. I know, it's weird. Not many people expect it to be like this, but it is weird. Like I said, he's got an extremely good 6P. In fact, he has one of the best 6Qs as well. But not only that, people tend to use <laughs> 5P or close slash accidentally as an anti-air. This also will catch jumping. This is also why they OS with close slash, by the way, if you did not know. Not only that, if he does 5H, this will also catch. If he does 6H, it will also catch. And he, he also has a third... <laughs> well, I guess at this point, we got like six anti-airs, huh? I mean, Mistfinder is also a classic anti-air. Obviously, more so relevant with levels. This is actually a advancing anti-air move. You can actually see it is a... It's an ant here. Used to actually be plus, believe it or not. This was like, what, plus three? He gets a combo on hit. In fact, he gets a really good combo on hit. And of course, if you jump or if you air dash at him, he's gonna fucking kill you. So he has a shit ton of ant here. His damage is very high. Is He's very plus. So depending on how, what the level of your move combined with your attack level, or sorry, the attack level of your move combined with the misfinder level will give you this, basically. So you can see in the context of like, 
close slash 2s xp if he's level 3 2s mistfinder cancel is level uh is plus 5 if he does far s into mistfinder level uh, level 3 he's plus 8 if he does 5 h or 6 h he is plus he is plus 10 basically you can understand why this character is very cursed. Also, he has one of the best backdashes. He has some of the best health and some of the best guts. And of course, like I said, he has very good meter gain. Basically, if you view this character, he is he is literally perfect. You know how in this intro he says like, I'm perfect. He's literally perfect. He's not joking. See, we haven't even talked about Alpha yet, but I'm gonna give you guys a little teaser, okay? If you don't, so I've listed here, hard to pick up, easy to master, and Alpha is here. She has a lot of shit, right? However, I'm gonna tell you guys a story, okay? I'm just I'm gonna give you guys a little teaser. So combo breaker 2019, right? I I was with someone at the time, right? And they asked for advice for their tournament set, right? And they played, I think maybe Hayun. And uh basically, like they played against someone for top 32, and they had they were like so unprepared, like they didn't know what to do against this person or like their character. And I told them, and I I, I mean this like no joke, like literally I told them this. I leaned in after they lost their first game, and again this is a first that you game. I said pick Alpha and use shotgun stance only. Don't do anything but use shotgun stance. And I was dead ass, like a hundred percent, just like serious. And they did it. And they won the set. They didn't even drop a round. They did not even drop a single round after that. And they basically had no idea what the other person was doing. They were just like, I'm going to just go in and I'm going to run the shotgun. It worked. <laughs> and they won. So here's uh, this stance. This is like, you remember, I, I would joke as like, uh, I would joke way back and I would be like, or you know how I say like, you know, if they do 5D, they want to win. This is actually the original. If they want to win, they f they do this. Here's what they do. They'll play neutral normally. They'll throw a grenade. They'll like, you know, they'll do like their little alpha stuff. And then there gets to a point, they burst you and then they pull out shotgun like this. And when they do that, that's like, all right, I'm actually, I'm trying to win now. <laughs> that's like, it's like the atmosphere changed. Again, we've talked about this. I mean, we talked about this a few days ago. You guys remember we had that, I'll thought ever note uh, from uh, Rue, I believe it was. But uh, here's like a good example of the type of stuff you had to keep in mind to fight against to fight against shotgun. And this isn't even like this doesn't cover all of it. This is very much so just for me. Basically, it's very important to understand just to save you time. It's this number one is this sh this shit charge shot. This is one frame if she charges, if she's in shotgun stance and she doesn't shoot, this is a frame one shot. If she does not charge it, it's three frames. It's one frame startup in five, plus five. If it's plus five, right, you'd think, okay, well, I have to respect. But then she has things like this. She has shotgun P. This is about what? Three frames? Yeah, three frames plus one on block, right? So you're like, okay, well, maybe I just respect against this character in FDR. She has a command grab. Not only does she have a command grab, she is in it. She is throw invul for it. Now, the important thing about that is this, this is the command grab. Uh, this is her shotgun S. So this is this is a anti air. Uh, it's zero on block, but if I zoom it out like this, you'll understand why this is a problem. So she has an anti air. She has a, a one frame shot that's usually three frames that can be plus five. It's zero on block. Although again, if you instant block this, you can punish her. Before you used to not even be able to get that. You have you had to gamble with her after that. And we used to say this character was like not that bad. Can you believe that? <laughs> like she is, she has also been nerfed in extreme amount like extremely and she's still fucked up and we haven't even talked about jump d wires honestly this is probably one of the most cursed like the cursed things she has right now now she has grenade right depending on when she throws it i don't know she pulls out of her booby or something then she can either throw it with 4p high or 2p low and uh if she has it out if you hit her it will go away right if you do not hit her it'll explode after a certain amount of time Right before it comes out, it actually goes from attack level one to attack level four, right before it explodes. Most projectiles do not have high hit stop like that. It's very rare. But if I had to say one thing annoyed me, it was actually just this. Because again, I've talked about how characters don't get knockdowns that easily, right? On on a lot of far pokes. Uh, but this is like the one exception. She was like so good at always hit confirming from it. You had to be crouching. But if you were crouching, she got an even better combo with 2H. So it sucked. That one is just 5H, yes. It's literally just like a gigantic line. So it's like, 
She knocks you down. This used to give her really good Oki, but they also nerfed that as well. Uh, the one weakness is like some characters can like, you can see she actually has a little bit of an extended hurt box, <laughs> somewhat, kind of, you can kind of see it. Very cursed character. When it comes to Alpha, I kind of went over her already, but she's basically like, she's got everything. She doesn't really have much weakness. The only weakness is that her anti-air is like, it can be unreliable if you space yourself specifically, but a lot of the time it's it, like, she's she's a very complete character. Uh, Bedman, on the other hand, is terrible. <laughs> uh, Bedman, number one, is like a keep away character, but he's like the one character that does not have a very good way of keeping you out. He doesn't really get much return from his pokes. His set play has gaps. His movement can be predictable. His air normals are not good at returns anymore. His ground normals are not that great. Basically, he's just not that good all around. Like he's kind of the opposite. They really, really nerfed him. So like he used to be like, a, I think he was literally the fairest top tier in the, in the game. Like he was like such a well-designed character, I think. But even for the context of X, he had a lot of knowledge checks so they like killed all of his knowledge checks and now he's basically just like he just dies he just exists to die basically dead man has a shit 6p his 6p is turbo ass i do not say that lightly his 6p is turbo ass dead man's thing is that he can re he basically keeps you out with this right 1h 2h 3h the problem with this is 1H launches on normal hit and combos in a tassie for good damage. 2H launches on counter hit and airborne hit. One of these, I'm going to remind you, he is a zoner, right? One of these knocks up. Two of these do not. Can you guess the problem here? He has no way of actually controlling space in front of him, right? Most of it is like through his normals, which again are not that great. Like you can see like 5k is 8 frames, doesn't really do much. Normal hit just combos into 5h really. Uh, far S is 9 frames, doesn't lead to much either. Or I guess you get 2h into a combo, but like again that doesn't lead into anything. 5h, 12 frames, it's like one of his best buttons I guess, but I guess not really. 6p, it sucks. In fact, this is basically the same problem as uh, Faust, but he has none of the benefits of it where basically he's like anterior is designed to trade but it's not really it's not really like good he doesn't really get much off of it his 6h is like annoying in fact like i get more annoyed when when bed bands do this move to me because i don't even know what, it doesn't really do much <laughs> it doesn't really lead into to anything oh yeah the thing that he's known for is he's got a really good 2p that was one thing that's one thing these sets of moves task a and task a prime task b and task c he can replay these and he can go and replay these after he uses them. Each does a different thing. Think of task, regular task A is just like a regular projectile. It comes out once and then it, it like comes back. Like it goes across the screen and comes back. Not really that good, but it's like annoying, right? It's, it controls space. Task A prime is the same thing, except when you, it hits you, uh, when it hits them, he teleports to them. Now, this is also not that great because of Blitz. In fact, if you have a DP, the train of thumb, or like the rule of thumb is, if he has meter, you uh, DP. If he does not, you just throw us after you Blitz. Task B is just like, kind of like, I don't, it's not really that good for anything outside of like, uh, like some replays. It's more like just to control space. Task C, this is like, this is a knowledge check move. In fact, you probably saw this move a lot from Obama's stream last night if you were watching him. This move sucks too. Uh, but again, like if you don't know how to deal with it, it might as well be like the best move ever. It's one of the easiest moves to Blitz, like <laughs> 30 frame startup total. Like for it to start descending, right? So I guess assuming, I guess uh, unless he's airborne, which is just twenty frames. But I mean, that's still very slow when he's floating on the top of the screen. Basically, this is his his thing. He can replay them all, and depending on where he did it, he leaves a sigil. So right, like he leaves a sigil where he used his item, right? Some of these are useful. Some of these are not. Some can be ran under. Some can be moved over. Some can be just killed. But generally, the the biggest thing is about you can always interact with it and you can always hit the sigil. They're not super useful. They're mostly used for Oki and like controlling some neutral. And again, if you don't know how to fight this character, I might as well, like he might as well be top five. So I don't know, but don't feel bad if you're not used to it. So his kit is basically just like, he, he really struggles with risk reward and he really excels if you're not familiar with the matchup. And his super is throwable. That's another problem. He has a special dash, a uh, frame three to 14. So he can actually, he dashes forward. And if you actually hit him, he will teleport behind you. I'm not joking. That's not a joke. He literally teleports behind you. <laughs> so biking in this game is a lot different from 
uh, Biken and Strive, right? So she has more of a stance parry. In fact, she literally just did it. She did run, start, Azami. So she has about five follow-ups. Well, she has technically six uh, follow-ups from it. Um, basically, depending on if you hit her, she can do a follow-up depending on what she thinks you're going to do. For example, she has the option she did here was H, which is, well, I don't remember the name. But uh, basically, it's very, very fast. It's very fast, but no invul. This means if Potemkin, I mean, Potemkin can't do this, but if Potemkin did a very fast multi-hitting move, even though it proc the zombie, this would beat her follow-up, right? But there are other follow-ups she would do that could beat that follow-up if they did that, right? The way I describe Biken is she's not really a character that controls neutral, but she controls, like, the pace of neutral. She's very much so, like, you know, it's very good, it's very easy for her to make other people play around her. She has two big problems. One, she dies really fast, and she's, because of her mechanics, she's a little, a little weak. Her characters that really excel at grabs. Usually if a character gets a combo off grab, she tends to be a little worse against them. Her thing is she has slightly harder combos on average, and she has very character-specific combos, but she gets very good damage. And oh yeah, she has air zombie as well. I forgot about that. So she has an air parry as well. That's what she's doing. You see how she's like putting the sword in behind like in front of her? That's her going into Azami. So she can choose when she leaves Azami as well. Or sorry, if you're used to new Strive. Uh, Tatami is much, much better in this game. Tatami is so good. It's not even comparable. I mean, a lot of her shit is much stronger in this game. Her buttons are much faster. She gets much more a turn off everything. Uh, maybe not much more a turn. She, her damage in Strive is pretty high as well. Let's talk about Potemkin, because this, this is an important part. Potemkin is the worst character in this game, right? Although, again, I want to emphasize this, because... I don't know, I see a lot of people talk about balance in this game, right? A lot of people are still like, you know, oh, I only want to play top tier or something like that. Character strength in this game is not that, like, radically different. You can easily play Potemkin and be successful, right? Like, I mean, FAB is this, like, especially, right, is like one of the best examples. The tier list strength is like very close. So like, even though I say Potemkin is the worst character, like, you could easily still win with Potemkin. It's just harder. Potemkin's thing is he's basically built just to corner you and kill you in one combo. That's pretty much like his design. He can touch of death you from specific hits if you're not careful. Like if he counter hits you with 6H, he can actually stun you and kill you from 100 to zero. The odds of him doing stuff like that are pretty low. Uh, and he's not that great at like other things like Mega Fist in this game is quite bad, especially in comparison to like Strive. He has pretty bad movement. Hammerfall is actually easier to deal with, but it's stronger. It's very, very hard to excel at this character because in general, like what makes him weak is not his capability of doing damage. It's the consistency of it. And that's really the biggest problem he has. If you're familiar with how to defend against him, it can be rough, but uh, I mean, like he can still run pressure very well and like this is basically his his main thing. He dropped it, but he's got one of the best anti in the game, and he's got some of the best ways of starting pressure or like leading into touch of death situations with uh like when he corners you. If Gigantor in this game is more of a stun tool. So like pretty much he just does a route into Gigantor and uh you're basically dead. So again, like even though he's like the worst character for consistency. He's very capable of killing you in rounds, like extremely. It's really just more read based, right? Like he has to take more of a gamble to kill you compared to like Johnny who just controls neutral, right? So, uh, but Temkin in this game, if you're familiar with uh, Strive, you're probably kind of weirded out by how he's doing a lot of his pressure. But in this game, Hammerfall cancels are similar to uh, Mistfinder cancels. He can do Hammerfall and to immediate break and actually use that for plus frames. He does 6k into Hammerfall break, he's actually plus compared to if he didn't cancel it, he's actually minus. And this is also another problem. Some of his like punishes aren't that great at short three distances, right? Like, like there, for example, like, if he was closer, he could have almost killed 100 to zero. But since he was further, he couldn't do it. Also in this game, Biken has, um, what is this shit called? Suzerain, Suzerain. So this is just a dash, uh, it's just an armored dash basically, right? So it plays like a, like an audio jingle and then she has her armor, right? So 
what people do is they either do suzerain into throw or they'll bait throw from here. So like think of this as like one of her ways of forcing offensive uh, situation. Uh, Venom's thing is basically is very good at controlling space and he's more of a mid-range character to keep away. Slayer on the other hand is built entirely on just killing you in like one go. He has a very special mechanic that uh, I think most people don't like, but we'll, we'll get into it in a second. This is already Slayer's main thing, or like one of his main things. It's Dandy Step. He reels back, and depending on how, like which one he uses, he either goes further or when he reels back, he can do a button from it. Depending on when he does the button, or sorry, depending on what button he presses is what he gets uh, from it. He has five options. Each option is fucking good. It's, well, not a, not all of them, I guess. I guess, like, health chair is not that great. But he gets access to Pile Bunker, uh, access to Crosswise, and he gets access to this, which is Under Pressure. So this is a mid that's, I think, zero on block. It's just actually his Oki tool, but you can use it in neutral. He can do the follow-up, which is an overhead that's throw in that, uh, the ball. So basically, Slayer, it's his way of RPSing even, around offense. But, uh, that, uh, Slayer, Slayer actually does not have traditional movement. He has a teleport even, dash. But, uh, Think of like no matter... Fukio. However, it is literally built into his movement. He does not have a special move that does it. What, what? he does is he can do backdash and cancel his backdash into moves. So here, see he backdashes and he instantly jumps and he instantly jumps back. When he does this, he carries his uh, his invul from his backdash, which means this was an invulnerable jump. So in order to do this, he would basically be doing 449 FD, right? Like that sort of thing. His thing is that he ca he uses BDC to carry invul and to RPS around it. The overall matchup, the, so, uh, the Slayer has to get in. Yeah, if uh, you are a low, act, like if you're a character with low active frames, he's very, very good at rotating a bunch of options very aggressively at you, and he gets a lot of damage. He's if you're a character a with right a lot now. of active frames, he can be very, very easy to bully. Yeah. Pile bunker is about four frames out of Danny step. Danny step is usually around like I think it can be between 14 and like 30 frames. I think depending on how fast it is. Right. When Slayer does this, he is still again carrying his invul. And he can also cross through you like that to throw, so he also be prepared for that. Grab there, and Dave's not moved out this corner. Yeah. Oh, that's a good back throw. Oh, bite. So here's here's like one of the best cases of it. See, he does back dash cancel bite. This is actually fully invul. This is a fully invul command grab. Because of how much invul carries over from his back dash into the cancel, this is fully invul. Whoa! All takes is one good mappa to get you in and. You can win a whole round off that. Yeah, and like counter hit trade Mappa too. Like if right. he has meter oh, to no. back him up as well, like that's it's oh, a Oh yeah, another thing to like, keep in mind. Yeah, Slayer does not have a lot of traditional Gatlings. Right. He's got close slash far slash. Nice. Uh, nice. Oh. Didn't, as like that, his that main tool. Yeah, close so slash is like very like, fast, but minus. Far slash is plus. Usually one ball slow. Yeah, but but that's it's still a So it's like his basic pressure thing. Any Slayer, uh, we haven't even gone over all of Slayer's moves, but like you can see what I mean. He's got a lot of options and he's basically entirely built to like kill you in close like proximity. The only thing that we didn't really show is crosswise. This is basically like it's almost like an anti air from Danny stuff. I mean, it basically is. It does a lot of damage if you hit them, but it's very punishable. I mean, look at the hurt box on this shit. <laughs> I mean, this is this is what an anti air looks like. Under pressure is zero on block, and it is plus. It's late is plus three. So this is his overhead. So this is basically his basic pressure string. If you mash on this or try to throw him, he fucking kills you. Uh, a lot of his hits are very low damage unless he gets a counter hit or he has meter or he has like a big call out like he's hot towards the end. The only thing that we didn't really see was we had, he has dead on time. Really, this is the only one that you want to keep in mind. He has some other ones, I guess, but it's it's not a huge deal. Uh, this is like similar to uh, Leo's super. If you do not block this when he's right in front of you and the super flash happens, this will hit you immediately. Be backdash cancel dead on time is like a classic. Uh, it's a classic Slayer move. A lot of Leo's shit, you could just disrespect with 2D. You could instant block 2D almost everything he did. But Leo is basically much faster in this game. He can go into stance much faster, and he can force shit a lot faster. The problem with him is, though, his kit is a lot less, like... In Strive, he's a lot... He's very strong because he has a lot of shit that other characters don't. In this game, a lot of characters have good stuff. <laughs> that he already has so it's very easy for him to be outclassed but he has shit like this still where like you know back turn stuff he can still do a lot of damage right 
His mechanic is still basically built on like trying to rob you. His offense in this game is much, much better. Uh, though in general, like his 5k is plus, his close slash is plus, like it's really plus. Air normals are a lot better. He's a lot better at converting from air to uh, air to ground. Just like in general, he's just he's he's a lot better in a lot of how his stuff works. But he's definitely got a lot more flaws with interacting with him. But of course, a lot of them require you to instant block. So if you don't instant block, then he's gonna fucking smoke you. Like for example, back turn H is just always a plus six in this game, rather than like in. Strive, you have to uh, stance cancel, right? Some characters, he can be very like gimmicky with his pressure and like RPS around the fact that <laughs> he's plus six in the same in a different way. Back turn H is plus six. It hits uh, different depending on the character. Like quite literally, it, it hits different characters crouching at different areas. Another thing that Leo doesn't really have in this game that's that's kind of a problem is his anti air kind of fucking sucks in this game. I won't lie. But like, uh, a lot of his frame data is, it's not that great for this game. He's like more of like a weird, like mid to like, like close range, like kind of like, you know, rush down character. But like, you know, typically characters that are mid range beat him in that field and characters who are close range beat him in that field too. So a lot of his pressure was built around a lot more 5k pressure and just like RPSing with like 2s and uh, being greedy with meter and also doing this. Again, in this in this version, back turn S is only six frames, and it's also minus one. Basically, Leo is a lot more about like you can kind of see what I mean. He's way more focused on like like just kind of running his shit, but not. It's not always like about like getting in. You know what I mean? Like I feel like a lot of Strive Leo is just like you get in, but I feel like a lot of Exert Leo is like you're like specifically looking for them to have like do something specific. It's a lot less like I guess you could view it like Exert Leo is a lot less reactive and. Uh, Strive Leo is a lot more uh, preemptive, right? All right, last one is Axel, right? You guys want to watch Axel? Damn, we went a lot longer than I intended, right? I don't know how you play Axel in this game and have fun. It's crazy to me. So Axel is a lot different also from Strive. He's a lot more, like a lot of his shit is a lot faster at controlling space, but in exchange for that, he is a lot more of a dead zone. Uh, or it's, I should say it's easier to get into his dead zone. But another problem with Axel is that he basically doesn't have a ton of damage. And again, risk award is a big factor for him. The other problem with him is that he doesn't really, like, I mean, he doesn't really do much. Like, it's just like he's he's built more like to be annoying than a threat, it feels like to me. His only real damaging routes are through bomber loops, which are very situational. They're, like, more situational than in this game than in X or in Strive, for sure. But in exchange for this, basically, Axel players play him like a fucking, like a nut. <laughs> <laughs> they play him they play him like a demon. He has a DP in this game. Let's already let's start off by this. He has a DP. All the Axel game plans are around DP, alright? Let's start there. It is a pretty good DP. But he also has a cross-up move where it's like frame one. So what Axel players do is they just RPS, like basically Axel players in this game play a lot like how Leo players play in Strive. And I'm not joking. Like I'm I'm not saying that as like as an exaggeration. It's like if you like gamble heavy play styles <laughs> and zoning, that's basically a lot of how people play Axel in this game. From Strive, a lot of his stuff is better, but like in in the context of like uh Exert, it's not that great. Like Look at this. This is like his main BNB, right? Does a good chunk of damage, but no knockdown, right? He basically never gets knocked down, which means every character that is good at challenging him. Oh, here, let's talk about Sparrow Hawk real fast. So he has a full screen stance called Sparrow Hawk. He can delay this and it becomes unblockable. If he does not delay it and he does it instantly, then it's just like a mid. Uh, or I guess he can do a low version too. I think. But basically, he can sh he can throw it in the center of the screen, the low like the low part of the screen, or at the top of the screen. Basically, a lot of it uh, it's not really that useful. It's again more annoying. As you can see, he'll say he'll when he gets to an unblockable point, it will he'll have like a speech bubble come up that says yes. But uh, until then, basically the entire thing about this, like the entire mind game around this, is like, am I gonna wait and do the unblockable, or am I not gonna? So it's not great. I mean, it's it's like. Not many like characters can contest it when you have it out, so like it's not that big of a deal. But I mean, like it's it's not like he's not that great. That's the point. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, in this game, it's a lot harder to move around Axel's shit, right? Like some characters, some characters can run under his shit. Like for example, Soul can run under five P very easily, right? Not every character can do that in this game, but in Strive, every character can, or almost every character can. Uh, a lot of characters can run under. Some can run under five P, such as like Milia. I think Elfelt. And as a result, like if you play characters like that, he has to be a little more mindful of things like that. Yeah, Axel's dying. 
So like he's better at controlling space like that. But the problem is in this game, Axel has matchups like Milia and um, Chip, which I mean, imagine you're playing Axel. You're playing Axel. You see this, you lose. That's basically what it's like. Milia, here's here's our, our game. You lose. So this move is actually plus. So this is actually plus, but they instant blocked it. So Axel is about minus like, I don't know, two or three. So he just DPs. <laughs> <laughs> so that's his DP. So that's basically how Axel players play in this game. They'll do things like that and then just RPS after. It's, it's basically how a lot of them approach it. But honestly, I don't know like how useful any other type of playstyle is long term. Oh yeah, he's parries too. Uh, he does it here. I don't know why he does it on their wake up, but or on, on their bounce. But uh, this is he has a mid parry and a low parry basically. One catch is only highs and then. What one catches mids and lows? I don't remember. It's not that great though either. It it's really just like another gimmick thing. Also, watch this. This is funny. This is basically Axel 101. He just ran at him. Oh, he's dead. Oh my god, he got fucked. <laughs> Basically, uh, there's not a there's not a ton to say about Axel. He's got a lot of options, but they're just like I don't know. He's he's one of the best examples of a character with a lot of options that are not does not have very good options. Basically, he's he's got a lot. They're just really bad. That's basically what he's like. Like he's got a lot of command normals. He's got a lot of options, but they just they don't do anything. You know? Oh, he's got jump two S. You look at the space he controls. Jump six K. Right? Oh, so cool. And then. <laughs> Then like they just tack and kill him anyways. That's basically what he's that he is. He also has a, a much better uh, hit confirm move. This is actually one thing that didn't get seen. That that's quite good. Uh, he can hit confirm into this from a lot of pokes, which is really his best. This is really his best like <laughs> hit confirm move or like his best. I think probably his best move in actuality or like one of them. It's really good. And that's like really it for Axel. He's he's a little like, I don't know, he's a little uninteresting in this game. Okay, so like before we stop, so we'll go over this again. So I'm going to touch on this a little more, right? So I'm going to explain, just summarize why I put these characters on this list. And like, if you're looking for them, again, this is unrelated to character strength. At the top, you can have characters that are really good or really bad, right? I mean, literally like Bedman is considered one of the worst, Johnny one of the best, right? But basically, Milia requires a lot of stuff to figure out on like a character specific level, but also like to excel with her in terms of matchup, uh, matchups or like m finalizing strategies. She requires a lot of precision. Slayer requires a lot of execution, although he's very straightforward in terms of like return and what he can do. But matchup wise and execution to consistently like use him well can be kind of bad. Again, this is under the assumption that you are going to there's only the assumption that you are going to keep trying to grow rather than just be like oh i'm just mashing with friends right johnny i feel like no one really <laughs> everyone knows about johnny uh baseline execution to play him is very high though like high execution is a consistent part of his strategy same with like even though like coins are not as huge of a relevant resource like you can tell the difference between someone that is mindful of their resources bedman bedman just i don't know he's he's a lot to keep a track of and he's not that great a lot of his matchups require him essentially going out of the comfort zone he was in so like he requires a lot of he requires a lot of work to be consistent same with zato zato is a lot harder than bedman in terms of like baseline execution but his matchup spread is quite difficult and in this game you have to know a lot more about eddie and be a lot better about min-maxing with Eddie. It's a lot harder to get Eddie back, and it's also very easy to lose him. And on top of it, in general, a lot of Zotto stuff in this game does not, it's not as generous. This is basically like, basically like Zotto in this game is much, much harder than Zotto and Strive. Like free, like not even close for a variety of reasons. But the baseline is just even in how you have to handle like Eddie. If you view Eddie uh, from Strive with, uh, to Zato, like any in this game, less about character strength and more about things like, for example, if you guess wrong with Zato in uh, in Strive, you get Eddie back quite fast. In this game, you lose Eddie for a very long time, but in exchange, you have Eddie for a lot longer when you run offense. So he requires a lot more, like he's a little more training mode to also figure out. He has a lot more like uh, room for mix-ups and in general he's rewarded for better execution in this game it's much harder to execute him in, 
again in general in this game because of how eddie works and also allow how his eddie moves uh go forward and things like that it's like zotto like you know that meme that's like the the daniel and then the cooler daniel it's basically like zotto and strive is like zotto and then exert strive is like you know the harder zotto and on top of it he's not considered particularly great zotto 6p in strive like everyone hated it right but Zotto 6P in this game is ass. It is really fucking bad. It is like probably the worst anti-air in the game. Um, but of course, like in exchange, he has Nobiru, which is definitely better than Frog. This is Nobiru, okay? This is a wall on the screen. I can't even zoom out far enough. Basically, the thing about Frog is that the advan disadvantageous uh, situation that comes from it is essentially it's a lot more aggressive. But I would say it's also much easier, like, you cannot anti-air Nobiru in the air, or sorry, you can't hit Nobiru in the air, but you can definitely hit Frog in the air. <laughs> Even though it's not as easy. I mean, look at this motherfucker. Other shit is much better. Mawaru in this game and Nobiru are probably better, but like everything else in terms of like what Zato has in, in Strive is probably much better. Actually, his command grab in this game is probably better because it's a guaranteed setup compared to uh, Strive. Instead of a pose, <laughs> He has the puddle. Oh wait, no, it's, it, he spawns P uh, Eddie from the puddle, that's it. Oh no, he just goes underground, that's what it is. He, but he can spawn from, from it, I forgot. I forgot he can even do this. Uh, this Also, this is for uh, unblockables. Well, it's not really unblockables, it's hard to blockables more specifically. But uh, basically he can, uh, he can unblockable you, theoretically. He had Shadow, Shadow Gallery, which is... Oh yeah, Amorphous in this game sucks too. Though in this game it's a reversal, it's a lot... It's like, you can't use it in neutral in this game. The Ram, basically, it's very hard to execute her directly. I'll, I'll put Pesimkin on easy to pick up, I think. We're gonna move him. We'll get to him. It's not just learning a lot, it's also executing a lot of it consistently. And uh, in general, she's just like, a lot of her matchups require a lot of precision and I should say situation risk reward and matchup risk reward. Answer, we kind of already went over it, but he's a lot to learn in the same sense of, actually, I, I don't know. Maybe he's also kind of easy to pick up. His normals are really good and very strong, uh, but there's definitely a lot to learn with him. But I think also, if, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll readjust this as we go along. Cause definitely like, as I've moved along, like I probably wouldn't have put soul, I would put soul on hard to master for matchups, but if I do that, I'd probably put Axel down here as well, for example. Um, Dizzy, she requires a lot of matchup or like character specific, not really character specific uh, combos, but tools, uh, specifically character specific setups. She requires a lot of like setups and she's a lot of training mode. But uh, on top of that, like once you figure out like the baseline, she's very good at controlling space and, and like neutral. It's just, she's very clunky to kind of get used to. Like her buttons are not that great. They're long range, but they're like kind of weird. Similarly, like she's not great at defending. She's got one of the easier to beat reversals. In fact, she's got one of the, the only ones that's easy to beat. Same kind of thing with uh, Heyoon, where like a lot of his return, or some of her return, I should say, is very, very, high off of specific hits and like specifically optimized route but um they don't really like like a lot of the optimal stuff is requires a little bit of execution so if you're very unused to like how he even plays like again they're not like a traditional character both in movement how they run their strategy but also how they uh how they play in the terms of like it's a lot of it's a lot more matchup strategy if they understand how to play against your character like bedman if you don't if you play against someone that is not good at fighting bedman this character might as well be easy to pick up easy to master if you play someone that knows how to fight bedman he might as well just die alpha it's like the same thing where it's like she she's very approachable on like a baseline level you don't need to do any like super complicated shit but if you want to develop and like become a competitive player you basically have to learn a lot of shit because she's got a, she's almost like she's suffering from success it's like she you have to learn so much shit because she has so much good stuff it's not like you know certain characters like uh who was i talking about like like axel where it's like you basically don't need to use half of his kit it's just like oh i'm just gonna dp or i'm gonna rps uh may i don't know may is probably the also in this category if soul is as well she's got a lot of like set play stuff to learn but like it's it's not that much more complicated you can absolutely play her uh at like a low level super fine she's one of the stronger characters at a low level a low level may she's one of the easier characters to progress with um but of course like as you like progress she also struggles more with specific matchups and requires a lot more fundamentals for uh excelling past that so leo is very easy to pick up he's probably easy to master as well if, if we're putting everyone else on this list but his matchup spread is quite rough so uh, i would not really i don't know he's like a weird middle ground leo as a character can be like 
like picking them up and playing them can be quite easy. Jacko, kind of like the same category where it's like, again, if you know how to play against her, she's really easy. She's really hard to win with. But if you don't know how to play her, she's very, very strong. Or sorry, if you don't know how to play against her. Basically, a lot of her, this character is, is built around, and this is a lot more easy to see than someone like Batman. She's way more built around like hoping your opponent just doesn't doesn't have any strategies <laughs> basically against your character. Because if they do, it's quite bad. The upside is she's quite she's not she's quite rare, but the benefit is that she can still play like her normals are not bad enough to where like she's unplayable. But if you were to play against someone who's very who's got a very developed game plan against Jacko, you'd be using more of your buns and more of your strategies. Way, way more than anyone else. Uh, Eno is very easy to play on the level of like you can very easily just curb stomp people with them but of course like her hard execution shit can be quite hard definitely not anywhere near as it was in Plasar but it's still like again a matter of a lot to practice a lot to execute Eno is just like I don't know she's hers is another context of like suffering from success where it's not like she's not hard to master because like she's like overwhelmingly complicated it's like she has so much good shit there's a lot of stuff you have to invest time to learn Biken basically very easy to play at a low level but one, once again once you play someone who starts developing strategies around rpsing with bike and it becomes less about playing bike and about how good at fundamentally understanding and rpsing you are that's like the big thing venom is basically like another case of like his baseline is quite easy and it's not exactly too complicated to get up and pick him up and play but for the most part it's like you have a lot to learn similar with uh, Venom, or sorry, similar with like Eno, where it's just like, he's got so many setups in so many different ways, like covering su different situations against different characters, and is incentivized to learn setups and stuff. It's easy to essentially optimize around and it's incentivizing to RPS around, or sorry, to optimize around uh, matchups. Chip is basically like, he's got such good buttons, and he's really good at bulldozing people that are unfamiliar with him, but if you, once again, start playing players that are very, very, that are very, very good at fighting chip and know how to like interact in the matchup chip is mo much more i think on this list a fundamentals check than anyone else you'll die very fast but it's not quite like i don't know it's very easy to die fast and feel bad with chip but it's i mean you're gonna be losing anyways with every character executing him well fast i think becomes very easy when you realize like oh my buttons are just so much faster than them and it's a lot easier to build those people but temkin is like very easy to pick up in the sense of his kit and like what you want to do with him is very linear. If you played grapplers in other games, like you'd probably have at least a bare minimum how to play him like very well. But obviously as things develop, it's quite, <laughs> it's quite hard. Basically you can view it more from the lines of like, well, how easy is this character when I'm learning? How hard is it when I'm getting good? If you aren't thinking about mastering the character, ignore the second half. That part is is not applicable. No, I, I just really like put them in the list. It, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, answer is basically like his same sort of thing with Potemkin, where his kit is very straightforward for characters in mid range playing footsies with them. But it's not really like a case of like, he's really just a lot of learning setups and learning how to beat people who learn how to beat your setups. Depending on character's strength, the obligation for you to guess correctly and like play around them is a lot higher in some characters than some others. It's more so that there's a lot more effort to learn outside of that. All these characters, depending on like who they are, they have a varying like complexity of B and B, right? Usually most characters in the bottom can get away with very little or even some on the like above here. Most characters on this list have some form of complicated execution if you go down the like the list of like, oh, I want to do what everyone else does, right? Like if you do Slayer, like people are saying Slayer is not complicated, but then he's got character specific routes out the ass for every character, as his BNB, right? The thing is you can still play very you can still play characters very well in this list without really knowing that much. But if you're like looking to really mask them and go along, it's a little, a little more complicated. Yeah, it's like more complicated. So like, see, I would say Soul is, is easy to pick up, easy to master. But on some matchups, you have to do one frame lengths consistently with Soul to do like to combo. To continue like Axel, Axel basically is like super linear with uh, a lot of his shit. I mean, he's he's basically just like Scribe Axel. I don't know how else to describe him other than he's Scribe Axel with a DP. So like, I don't know, <laughs> you lose your minds. <laughs> Raven is basically a good god mid-range character. Probably the easiest character in the game to pick up. Um, very strong. 
but again, he he does have some weaknesses. His matchup spread is, is not super linear. It's not the same as someone like Faust, right? It's a little more about understanding risk reward and situations. Kai is a little more weird because again, it's also dependent on matchups, but he has some of the more easier execution with Raven, but uh, some matchups can be fucking ruthless. It's like he can still be out risk reward kind of reliably. Like some characters will just beat him because he doesn't do enough damage. Um, Faust is very, very strong. He's very easy to pick up. Uh, his strategy, his game plan is also like very easy to understand. And like, it's also easy. It's very easy to get good with Faust over time, just playing him by nature of like how strong he is and how he encourages you to play. Um, similarly to Mei, where it's like, they're, they're very, they're, their archetype is very good. Like it's very well designed. Then is a very high damage mid range character. Think of him more as like uh, kind of like the Nago mechanic of the game of using like s canceling one special move into another. And by doing that, he can use things like DP cancels and the beak driver and whatever, which means a lot of his matchup spread is quite good. But of course, he's still like he's not the best character. A lot of characters like when you start getting into the, like the territory of like Sin, Jam, Soul, Dizzy, Biken, like when you start getting into those characters, that's when it's like a lot of their matchup spreads really good. Uh, they lose like maybe like a few characters and that's like it. But they're still not even a contender for top five. Jam's uh, kit is basically very linear. She's very, again, similar to uh, me. It's like her kit is very direct with what it wants you to do. It's very easy to understand her. It's very easy to execute her at a low level because of how strong a lot of her frame data is. Also kind of similar to Chip. I should say like some of her execution stuff is kind of complicated. Uh, it is very match specific, obviously. But in general, like she's very, very strong. And she's like the type of character that's like, if there was a character in Strive, like built to like bulldoze through a lot of like the established, like, you know, kind of exerted mindset of how you play characters or how you look to play characters, people would say like, oh, like Nago is very, like, he's just, he's not built for the game. Jam is like that in Exert, but she's like actually built for the game. Like, it's like, she's actually built to like, be very good at forcing people off of, or overwhelming people away from like their matchup. So she's very good in just the sense of she's very good at overwhelming you and very good at establishing like so many mind games out of how many options she has. So again, she's very, very, very straightforward in that way. Soul is very, very easy to pick up. Extremely, extremely pick, uh, easy to pick up. Probably also tied for like one of the easiest characters you can pick up and just match with. But uh, his optimal stuff is a little harder and some of it you have to do anyways across matchup but the most difficult thing about him is really just how patient you have to play that's really it it's if you're capable of being patient with soul i mean that's really like a lot of the character it's really just like executing like super jump iid routes and knowing character specific routes and being patient that's like all you really have to to need for this character me I think is also the same sort of thing, but she's much better at forcing her own game plan rather than be entirely patient. And then Leo. Uh, Leo is basically just the robbery character. Like this character just exists, try to rob you. Uh, it's very easy to play him. It's honestly the hardest part about him is matchups and like the mind games aspect of it. But I mean, the problem is really just his matchups. Matchups is really a lot of it. And that's really it. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a ton about Leo. That's actually why I kind of saved him towards the end. Because, like, like compared to Strive, he changed a lot. But it was in, like, weird ways. Um, but basically, a lot of his kit is similar. But he's definitely, like, he has to be a lot more mindful about how he commits and be a little more patient. Because if you're just going ham all the time, then, I mean, he'll you'll get killed because of damage difference. Similarly, like, if I had to give you more specific answers, like, again, I've talked about how specific characters have... Uh, better anti-airs, as well as there's also uh, characters with more specific uh, strategies around them. So like I'll give you an example of like I said, so if you're looking for a character with like good anti-airs, Johnny, number one, uh, Alphelt, Sin, absolutely, Venom, absolutely, Chip, absolutely, uh, who else? Uh, Kai, Faust, and Raven. You can see most of the characters that are actually easier to pick up actually have a better 6P. But that's about it. That was long-winded.